this webinar, as Kyla mentioned, is all, all about attenuators, featuring the featuring the uh, Somex T, our the newest addition to our product line, and something I'm very excited to see come to our product line. It's been a a handy little uh, problem solver, and we will uh, discuss some of the features and benefits of it a little later on uh, here in the webinar. Uh, the general agenda for today, as, uh, as mentioned, is about volume controls, input plates, and the SOM XT, uh, where you might use each of these things. Now, I'll touch briefly on, uh, on these points uh, with each slide. Um, the general idea behind attenuators is uh, that you would use them, you know, anywhere remote volume is required without access to the head end equipment. Uh, so they're very, really very flexible. Of course, uh, I'll go a little bit more in depth with each piece, uh, why you would use them. Um, attenuators will give you some local simple volume control uh, to the end user, um, which will help keep, the, keep them away from the, uh, the head end equipment where they can mess with settings uh, that may not uh, be necessarily where they should be uh, making adjustments. So it gives the, that remote volume control uh, to the end user in a very simple way. What they do, generally uh, attenuators act as a variable resistor that uh, raises or lowers uh, the output power from the amplifier to the local speakers in the area. Um, of course, we'll touch on, on some of the other features as well as we go. Uh, how they work with amplifiers, that depends entirely on the unit, so we'll, uh, we'll chat about that as well. And a couple of more factors is that uh, some are not decora style, so that's something you want to pay attention to. And uh, we'll have some examples of, uh, of some connections and such uh, as we go as well. So starting with the uh, AT10K, which is described typically uh, out in the industry as a basic 10K pot, uh, the idea here is that this will allow you to do direct volume control on an amplifier that has a voltage control uh, input on it. Um, not all amplifiers have the ability to be controlled by a 10K pot. Um, but uh, many of ours do, including the ones that you see here on your slide, the M900, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'll show you an example, including the A5000 a little bit later on. Um, pretty basic setup. There's only three connect conductors involved in these. They're typically done with uh, push-in connectors on our amplifiers. Uh, so you have your in, uh, your uh, control input, and your, uh, your ground or common. So very simple hookup uh, when it comes to these. Um, and, uh, and fairly self-explanatory when, uh, when you see how they go together with, uh, with the amplifiers. Uh, moving on to the uh, AT25 and the AT100 volume controls, these are basically a very similar idea to the AT10K, very similar in look uh, and in application, but on, in this case they don't connect directly to the amplifier, they don't, they don't um, uh, they don't control the amplifier's output per se, they actually control the power going to the speakers themselves. So these get, instead of being installed uh, to an input directly on the amplifier, they get installed in line uh, between the amplifiers and the speakers. Uh, so as you can see on, uh, on the diagrams here, you have uh, two input cables coming in with your, your plus and minus, and then uh, two output connectors uh, that just move on to toward the uh, the speakers uh, with with transformers in. Of course, uh, these are used in 70 volt applications. As you can also see, there are uh, 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 10 different steps when it comes to what volume you can actually set of that. Uh, 10 being full volume, as also known as uh, 0 dB. The rest being uh, cuts by 3 dB per step. Uh, as we work, work our way down toward the completely off at the bottom, um, just below the one at 33, minus 33 dB is where the lowest actual volume that you can set it is. And beyond that, when you go down below that, you're turning it right off. Also in the AT series is the AT100 EMG. This basically works in the same way as the uh, other two, other three, other two AT models. Um, but this one allows you to have an override uh, for emergency paging and things of that nature. Gives you a 24 volt uh, relay uh, for applications that require emergency paging to uh, bypass and override the attenuator. So for the input side, you still have your two main connections, you still have your two main output connections, but you've also got uh, the connection for the 24 volt uh, source for, uh, uh, for uh, of the relay. Um, so you can see quite simply there how that wires in um, with those uh, those types of systems. So you've got your input coming from the amp, the output going to the speakers, and the 
24 volt uh, override uh, um, coming from an alternate source to uh, to bypass the attenuator or override it. And a similar idea with the volume steps on this one as the other uh, AT models as well. The only difference between this and, and those is that this also includes the relay um, for the override. Just a quick look at the specs on the AT series. Uh, we have, of course, the AT25, the 100, the AT100 EMG, and the AT10K. You can see the input capacities vary depending on which units you're using. Um, so the 25, you've got a 25 watt capacity. The 100, in both cases, has a 100 watt capacity, and that really doesn't matter for the 10K pot because you're controlling the amplifier, not the uh, speaker output level per se uh, with that one. Um, all of these, excuse me, are uh, Decora style plates, so they uh, they can fit into a Decora style uh, white plate if that's the way you're going, um, and uh, they're very elegant, basic, simple look uh, for the end user. The AT series continues with the AP versions, which are uh, just a slightly different look from the other AT models, and they do uh, allow the override as well, similarly to the uh, 100 EMG. Um, these ones are all a low, lower wattage capacities, so uh, this, the AT063 AP has a 6 watt capacity, the 303 has a 30 watt capacity, and the 603 has a 60 watt capacity. Um, they have a, a bit more of a, uh, a more of an, I suppose, a decorative look uh, to them with the way that uh, that the faceplate is designed on them. Of course, uh, maybe a little bit more. Uh, indicative to what they do for the end user, having the uh, speaker icon on there as well. Uh, so maybe it's a little bit easier for the end user in a, an application where they're not 100% sure what that knob's actually there for. Um, they can uh, they can see quite clearly what this is is there to do. Um, so as I said, these all do have the uh, overrides on them, and this is kind of a look at the way they wire here. Um, coming from the amp, you've got your 70 volt output and your uh, your common. Um, of course, you're in in these cases, you would run it through an external power relay, um, and that would give you the option of having your your override uh, on the urgent input. Um, of course, you can do this either two or four or three or four or a two wire connection rather. Um, at the bottom, it'll show you there uh, how you're coming in with your your normal signal and then the urgent override signal uh, on the R. Uh, labeled uh, uh, connector post and the uh, the common comes in uh, for the main speaker output as well. Um, <clears throat> so just to touch base on where you might use the AT uh, volume controls in general, um, again, pretty much anywhere where volume is uh, is required without access to the head end equipment, these simplify things very much for the end user and uh, keep things keep people away from the head end where they really oughtn't be uh, messing around with the settings. Um, and uh, and just really make it simple. You could use these uh, typical uses. You see them in churches. You see them quite often in uh, in schools. Um, you see them in office settings where uh, you might want to have local volume control if it's in a multi-zone situation. Some like to have them directly in their offices um, or any time when you've got two rooms taking the same signal and you want to have one at a different volume level, you can wire them um, so that you have that option. So moving uh, quickly on to connection plates here, this is um, a very, very brief piece of the webinar today. Um, we do have a couple of, of connection plates. The idea behind these is that they can install on the wall and hardwire a connection back to the amplifier system at the head end. Um, these will allow you to have remote inputs for uh, basically anything you need. You can either do mic level or line level on these. It doesn't really matter um, which level you're using on these. Of course, we see uh, we have an XLR female option uh, for a mic input plate uh, as well as a quarter inch female TRS jack, uh, which basically it's your choice as to which one you use. Uh, whichever makes more sense for your application is, is, is what's appropriate. Typically, you'd see a lot of these in conference rooms. Um, again, in schools, you see, uh, see these uh, school gymnasiums quite often will have these in place. Um, again, it's meant for the flexibility of the system. So. Uh, really, almost any job could theoretically have something like this, um, but really the uh, the idea is that it's for a remote input, again, where you're trying to put something into the system, but not really getting access to the head end portion of it. 
um, so that uh, you're not messing around with the settings at the head end. You're just putting in a connection and, and going from there. Now, this would be the star of our show, the SoMix T-24 volt. That's quite the name on it, um, quite the uh, the model number we have with this, but uh, it is a very simple, uh, very handy problem solver to have around. Um, when I was in the integration side, this would have saved my life a bunch of times, um, and now I was just so happy to see this come out in January that uh, that we have this solution for people to do both remote input and volume control for uh, one or two lines in, uh, into the system. So what we have on the, the SOMIX uh, is we have a mic input and we have a line input and we have volume controls for each as well as a bass and treble control for the mic input. Um, so you can control the tonality of that particular input and uh, have a little bit of control if you're getting into a situation where maybe you've got some uh, some feedback or something, you can adjust a little bit of the input uh, uh, EQing um, to try to deal with that and make yourself a little bit more clear. Um, again, this the idea here is, is to give those remote inputs, those remote volume controls um, in a way that keeps uh, people that aren't maybe educated necessarily in how to use their front end equipment, um, it kind of keeps them away and gives them the control that they need uh, in a very, very simple way. Um, it comes native in talk over mode, which is a very handy thing, um, and it uh, can also do an auto mix, and I'll show you in a second how you can make that change. Um, the talk over is a 30 dB talk over, uh, which holds for three seconds, and the idea there is that when a signal comes in on the microphone input, it will mute the line input by 30 dB um, and allow you to make your announcement over uh, the signal that's coming in on the line input or your background music source. There are some optional accessories that come with this. Obviously, um, from what you can see, it is a square design that does not fit in, our, in a standard two-gang North American wall plate as it comes out of the box. So there's an accessory for it. It's called the SO Mix Plate. Um, which we've designed for it here in Canada, uh, that will allow you to put this into a standard two-gang box uh, for North American use. Of course, it does also come with the UK box for surface mounting, um, so that given that the shape doesn't really matter for, for surface mounting, you can still use the two-gang, uh, the uh, UK-shaped uh, wall box for that for, the, uh, for surface mounting. Um, the AD246 is also an option for this. Um, you do require 24 volt power for the, the SOMIX, um, and the AD246 is our option to get that voltage to the unit. Um, now that can be extended from the rack or it can be used as a wall wart in a surface mount application, or you can use alternately uh, a 24 volt um, transformer that was supplied by others by maybe an electrical company uh, or someone of that nature. Uh, to make a bit of a clean setup uh, by using an in-wall uh, voltage uh, uh, transformer. Uh, so that would give you that option as well. That's why it's not as a, included as a uh, specific piece that comes with it, um, because you do have some options as to how you're going to power the uh, SOMIX. So a little bit more looking into it, uh, we've got an image here of the SOMIX in its two-gang wall plate. So. Uh, what happens there is you actually take the UK ring out, off of the unit um, and slide that into the uh, the two-gang wall plate for simple usage in a standard two-gang wall box for flush mounting here in North America. And then an image there of the uh, AD246 wall adapter, which, as you can see, is, uh, is designed as a wall-type adapter. Um, so that would be my purpose for recommending that perhaps a in-wall transformer might get used um, in a new build. Um, so that you're not running an external power supply to this. Um, as I mentioned, you've got your inputs, a, a microphone XLR balanced input, which you have the option of uh, 20 or 40 uh, dB sensitivity, minus 20 or minus 40, that is, uh, dB sensitivity on the mic input. Uh, the line level RCAs on the other side have a minus T 10 dB um, native input level. Uh, everything is connected by the Euro block on the back of the unit. Um, power, phantom power is available, with uh, tw which can be uh, 24 volt, and that's selectable as well. Um, and that's pretty much it. It is a white unit, and it does not fit in a Decora wall box or a Decora wall plate, so that's something to be aware of. It would only work in a flush mount situation with our uh, adapter plate for the two-gang wall box. Now, having a look 
at the inside of the unit. Basically what happens is it splits into two pieces uh, behind the faceplate. Um, so what you're seeing is actually uh, both parts of, of the innards uh, of the uh, SOMIX. Um, so on the left, what you'll see is where your uh, line level connections are. Uh, so that's circled now. Um, so on those posts, what you have is there's six connections there and only actually five of them are used. Um, so the one on the left is completely unused, the one to the far left. Um, the second and third in from the left are for your 24 volt power supply. And the last three, so the ones um, on the right, are all your signal connections. So what it does is uh, it comes out at a line level output at 0 dB, which is not a proprietary connection in any way. It's not what networked. It is a line level 0 dB output, so it can literally be put into any mixer or amplifier system after this unit. So it, uh, it can be used in retrofits, if, even if you're not using TOA equipment or anything specific. Um, it doesn't really matter because you're summing your outputs into a standard line level output from, from this unit, and it is a balanced output. On the other portion, which is uh, just the other half of the processing uh, that's inside of this small box. Um, you have three jumpers that uh, adjust your, or that can make the adjustments that we've already mentioned. So um, if for the, adjusting the mic sensor t sensitivity, you have a jumper on the left-hand side, which is currently circled, um, and that allows you to switch between 0 dB or, or rather minus 40 dB and minus 20 dB for the mic sensitivity. Um, down on the bottom, which is circled now, uh, you have the phantom power jumper. So basically, um, that will allow you to choose whether you're using phantom power with the system or not. Uh, of course, this being inside the wall box, if you need to make any changes with the jumpers, you do have to take the unit off of the wall to make those, um, those adjustments. So this would be uh, something that you would want to set for your most common usage. And then the other jumper is off to the right, circled now. You have the talkover function. So like I said, it comes native in talkover mode. Um, so if you want to just have it mixed down and not have the microphone input overriding the stereo line level input, uh, then you pull that jumper and it will just mix down like, uh, like any other mixer does into the single summed output at zero dB. Um, I should actually take a step back here, and uh, we, in terms of usages, places you might use the uh, SOMIX T is, uh, like I said, anywhere where you need um, a remote input and volume control to go with it. Um, many of these are being used in places like uh, arenas. I've got uh, several spec in for that sort of an application for like the penalty box input and uh, things of that nature. Uh, you could use them in churches, schools, um, maybe even a gymnasium if you protect it. Um, you could use this in boardrooms, conference rooms, and a big usage for me um, is uh, is in community halls, actually, because uh, it does give you that remote input and the remote volume control all in one little small package that doesn't let the person who's renting the hall and using the audio system get too close to the um, head-end system, and again, they can very easily mess up settings um, with that head-end equipment if they're allowed to have that to, that contact with them. So for a renter's type scenario, you have the ability to give them those inputs and those volume controls without letting them get too close to the head-end equipment um, to adjust the settings of the, of the main system. Um, now just having a look here, this is a Shot of the uh, A5000, this is the amplifier that I'm going to be making some examples out of um, over the next little bit for doing connections for these uh, attenuators. And uh, we'll, we'll start with, uh, with the um, 10K pot. This is where you would, uh, would attach an AT10K to uh, the A5012 or the A5006, which we call the A5000 series. Um, so shown here is uh, where that master control volume would be connected. Um, on the mic or line two input, um, it's just uh, it is a separate uh, connection. It's just that we've bulked it in with the with the line level input connection there, so that uh, to save space really is 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 the key there. Um, so that's the spot where a 10k pot would go uh, would be connected, and that would provide you with your master 
Uh, as you can see on the A5000 series, there is no master on the front of the unit itself. Um, so the only way to apply a physical master uh, to it is to have one um, attached with a 10K pot on the wall. Uh, we did this for simplicity of the, of the system usage for the end user uh, by taking away that master control on the uh, unit itself. It, uh, it does limit the amount of confusion that can come out of this system and it uh, then gives the end user only the four uh, controls for the various lines coming into the system. Next we have the location of where you would connect your speaker outputs and uh, thusly would also connect the AT series um, standard attenuators. So anything, any of the attenuators that we mentioned that were not the 10K pot would go in here. Um, and really they don't connect per se directly with this. What they're doing is they're being connected in line uh, between the speaker output and the, uh, uh, from the amplifier and the speaker itself uh, to regulate the power that's going to the speakers in the system. Um, so that connection happens there. And here's a, kind of a, an example of a setup using the A5000. Um, this is the basic standard setup with the A5000 with no uh, attenuators on the walls at all. So this is, you know, kind of the the, uh, the standard system as you would use it without those remotes. You could then add, uh, as mentioned, a remote master volume control, which gives you that master um, and can keep the end user, again, away from the head end system and not getting into the GUI software for the uh, A5000 series. Um, so it gives them that output control remotely where it can still be limited from the, uh, the amplifier itself and uh, they're not messing with the actual settings on the amplifier. Uh, in this example, we've uh, gone to a uh, basic AT series uh, controller, the non-10K version. Um, so this is uh, going in between the, the amplifier's output and the, uh, the inputs on the speakers themselves uh, to regulate the volumes of the speakers. And a uh, very simple setup, you've got your, your, your lines coming into the attenuator and then um, it's controlled in there and they come out from there into the speaker. So very, very simple in usage. And uh, in this application, basically it would be used the same way as the, uh, the AT-10K uh, the, or the 10K pod. This, this design here would give you overall control over all of the speakers and uh, basically just give you that master control again in a slightly different manner. <clears throat> this would be an example using the SOMIX-T uh, as the main connection on line uh, mic or line input one. So this gives you um, the option of doing priority uh, with the A5000 series uh, and assigning it to the SOMIX. Um, so that you can have a mic and line input coming from the SOMIX into the A5000 series um, amplifier. So kind of a, a good example there of, uh, of how you might connect the SOMIX into that system. Now if you want to get really nuts, you can use all three on the A5000 series. Um, this would be an application I, uh, I kind of came up with that allows you to have separate speaker volume controls um, for, for different zones, even though they're taking the same exact signal. This, uh, this application gives you the master control, um, which might be a little bit more local to the, uh, the A5000 or on the, uh, maybe an opposite side of the wall, so that you have general master control of the amplifier itself. And then uh, it shows the connection, obviously, from the amplifier directly to the first set of speakers. But on the same run of speakers, uh, I've added in an AT basic series, basic uh, uh, wall attenuator there um, for the last speaker in the line. Now, in a case like this, you might have a one room that's your main room, and then off of that room, say a kitchen or something of that nature, uh, you've got another space that needs um, a speaker, but it may not always need to be at the same volume level or uh, or SPL as the rest of the speakers in the system. So what this allows you to do is uh, to make that last speaker just a little bit different in terms of volume than the rest of the speakers in the system. Now this has to be done the, sort of the way it is, is shown here um, so that you have control only for that, for that particular attenuator uh, for the speakers that are behind it in the line. So this attenuator, the, uh, the bottom of the two attenuators shown here, um, would not control any of the 
three speakers on the left, only the one on the right, so it would only be able to control anything behind it in the line. Uh, using a similar application and some creative wiring, you could do multi-zones of the same thing, sending the same signal out to uh, multiple zones of speakers um, and giving them each very, their own volume controls in their uh, individual spaces. Um, that would require a uh, speaker line splicing and a little bit more creative uh, wiring, uh, which we don't really address in this uh, in this webinar. Um, but uh, just know that the option is there. And if you do need to do a multi-zone that way, um, it would actually be better to have it done through a speaker selector, in which case you would be able to also have on-off control over each of those zones. And then you would put the attenuators in behind the speaker selector so that you could control each zone independently from there. Moving on. So this is something that is brand new. This is the WP700. This is a, a input selector and a volume control specifically designed for the MA725F or MM700F. Um, the 725 is an amplifier, a new mixer amplifier that we released late last year, and the MM700 is the uh, matrix mixer version of the same uh, amplifier. It just doesn't have any amps built into it, so uh, it has the same footprint, same functionality. And the idea behind the WP700 is that it duplicates what is available for control on the front panels of the MA725 uh, or 700 um, and gives you uh, control in each specific zone if you like it or in a remote location from the amplifier, again, to keep end users a little bit away from the head end of the uh, system, not, not adjusting settings directly with the amplifier, but actually just using this wall controller to make their changes to the system. So design behind the MA725 and the MA MM700F was primarily for the restaurant uh, and hospitality uh, application. So say, for instance, you have a restaurant, a uh, standard restaurant with four zones. Um, you would be able to attach four of these to the MA725 or uh, MM700F, um, and that would give you independent input and uh, volume control for each of those zones. Uh, this can be mounted in a single gang electrical box. You've got 300 feet uh, of use or of distance between the uh, the control unit and the amplifier itself if required. Uh, there is zero configuration. This literally does just plug in with Cat5 uh, from the zone it's controlling to the amplifier itself, and from there the settings are complete. You're done. You don't have to do anything else with it. Uh, the other, the most important function I think of this um, to, to note is that it defeats the front panel operation of the MM700F or the MA725F that it's connected to. So if you have one of these plugged into zone one uh, of the amplifier, uh, what it'll do is it will override the amplifier's controls for that zone so you can't control it from two different locations at once. The whole idea there is, again, keeping it simple for the end user so that they uh, it avoids confusion for the end user and they're not uh, making big adjustments at the head end of the system. Um, so very, very basic in use. Like I say, uh, you have two knobs on here, one for simple for source selection and the other for volume control. And now using that in an application, uh, this shows how you would uh, generally use it uh, in um, a four-zone application. So you could theoretically have one in one of the WP700s mounted in each of the zones um, so that you could uh, have local control in each zone. Or um, for my own uh, use, for my own designs, I will typically recommend for a restaurant type application that you might have the amplifier hidden away in a, an amp uh, rack in a room somewhere that's locked away and the, uh, the staff doesn't necessarily have access to it. And then you might just put four uh, WP700s even right up next to each other behind the bar um, so that uh, the waiters, waitresses, uh, the folks that are a bit more higher turnover in the hospitality industry don't have to learn a whole bunch about their audio system in order to make it work. All they have to do, know how to do is change between uh, line input settings and uh, be able to control the volume in the zone that, uh, that they're working with. Uh, so it makes things very, very simple for those uh, high turnover applications where you maybe don't have the most knowledgeable people trying to run the system um, and, uh, and therefore perhaps messing with those connections, those, uh, those settings at the head end. Um, really making, we're really making a push towards simplicity for the end user, so these are some of the things that we're 
doing to help the end user um, to work their systems without having to get into a situation where they're making service calls for basic settings that have been adjusted and that, has, that shouldn't have. And coming up to the end of the webinar, we are just a quick showing a quick reminder here on some of the other wall control units that we have available. Uh, these are designed specifically for the 9000 series and the M9000 M2 um, mixer and amplification systems. Um, that is our uh, one of our standard DSP units. Uh, these can also work with our M864D digital amplifier. They don't require in that application to have the RC001T remote uh, control interface for the uh, for connecting to the M864. Uh, but they do require that interface for connection to the 9000 series. Uh, these are all preset panels uh, and would be dictated by the programming that's put into the 9000, and that is a completely different webinar, so that is going to be all I'm going to say about these particular controllers.